All right, welcome to the All Star Scars channel. I'm Glenn, and today's fun project we're gonna just make happy accidents, no mistakes or something like that. As far as far as Bob's telling us here, anyway, uh, welcome to the channel. I've got a '97 F-150 behind me with 138,000 miles on it. It's never had a transmission service, so the fluid's never been changed. The filter, as far as I know, is original. I bought the truck in 01, so I own it 20 years. It had about 21,000 miles at that time, and I don't think the original owner ever changed the fluid, didn't have a reason to. So anyway, today we're gonna do a little experiment. We're gonna drop it out. We're gonna see if there's a little yellow plug in the bottom of the pan. That would mean it's original. Uh, at the factory, I believe the plug is where the dipstick tube goes in to check the fluid level. And they just kind of pop, push and pop that thing down in there, sits down in the belly of the pan and doesn't do any harm. It just lives there until someone swaps it out. There's a magnet down in there. We'll clean that out. I'm sure it's got some crud. This transmission shifts pretty well for its age. It's a two wheel drive. It's used for work. Um, it has a little bit of shutter I've noticed lately in the last, I don't know, six months or a year, just going into overdrive in the fourth gear. By the way, it is a 4R70. Uh, some are W's, you know, it's all the same term, 4R70, 4R70W, 4R70E I think came a little later on and a little more advanced, but that's just internally. So anyhow, let's get under the truck, let's check it out and get to work. Okay, here's the 25 cent torso. Our transmission pan is right here and it's held, with, held in with 14 10 millimeter bolts all the way around and they're not too tight and I'm going to give you those torque specs at the end here or somewhere here in the video. Here's the front of the transmission where the uh, torque converter is behind this bell housing here and there's our oil pan. So this is pretty wet right in here and what I noticed as we go back and we slide down, I've got the truck up on uh, ramps right now and then it's jacked up in the back with a jack and two safety stands as you can see so it's level but and I have uh, chocks here so that is chocked make sure it's chocked and uh, for safety let me scoot back I'm going to show you where there's a smoking gun here so this oops sorry about that I was getting a little little shaky the uh, transmission output is right here and there's a seal let me zoom in a little bit has been leaking and it's kind of running down here I can't really get it because the exhaust is in the way but let me bring the light over like right along here and then it's kind of coming down and it's dripping all over this so it's making a mess now it's not to say that the uh, pan gasket isn't leaking they can get old and brittle and by the way we'll be putting a new one in these are reusable if yours is fairly new and it's factory uh, you can reuse them so that's something to keep in mind we're gonna go with a motorcraft and I'll give you those part numbers anyway why don't we start by I'm gonna spray this down with brake clean real good kinda wipe it down get all that excess crap over here out of the way I don't want anything getting into the uh, valve body once we drop this and it's gonna be a mess to begin with. So I've got a big old, uh, I guess you'd call it pan here. So this is something you could buy at one of the big box stores. It's pretty big. It's probably like almost two feet by three feet. Uh, you can mix cement in these and stuff like that, as you can see I've done in the past. That's gonna be my big drain pan because when we let this down, this will get kind of messy. So let's get to it. So here's what we'll be using for the filter. I'm going with the Motorcraft and this is the part number right there. And this model is two wheel drive. So the sump pickup tube here is a little bit shallower than the four wheel drive will be deeper. I guess it holds a little more fluid. Speaking of fluid, I've got a case of Mercon 5. Yes, originally the truck did have Mercon, so this supersedes that, and I think they suggest Mercon 5 for that. Here is our gasket. This is a Ford OEM, and uh, you'll have to forgive me, I forget the part number. I'll put it in here in the uh, description, but this is a brand new Ford gasket, which is like uh, metal with a rubber coating on both sides, and it's reusable. So anyhow, that's what we're using. Let's get to it. All right, spraying this down a little bit, get the loose crud out, and then I'll uh, hit it with some compressed air just to blow any loose contamination out. Thank you. 
So I'm going to start by taking these bolts out. I'm going to leave two up here and then two in the back. And then we'll loosen this and kind of let this thing drop down and get the excess out. So I have uh, I have my pan, which you saw under here. Don't lose your bolts. Keep them all in one spot. So impact helps you a lot with this job. It'll go much faster. Now I'm not going to bore you taking all these bolts out, so I'll fire the camera back on when we get to that point. All right, we're getting close, so let me just loosen these. I'm not going to take them out. I'm just going to loosen them. It's dropping down. It's starting to drip already. Oh, boy. Let me get my pan under here. There it goes. So we'll let her start flowing. Try not to get your gun too uh, messy. But it's bound to happen. So I'm looking at this fluid coming out and it's kind of brownish, brownish red. You want to see it bright red. But like I say, for being as old as this is, you can't complain. So we'll let this drip for a little bit and I'll turn the camera back on. Alright, so all the bolts are out except for these two up front. And keep in mind that this pan is going to be full. It's going to have a lot of uh, fluid in it. And what I'll do is once we get it out, I will bring you uh, out from under the truck and we'll look inside this pan and see what kind of goop we find. Okay, here we go. The balancing act, I call it. Oops, there we go. Just a little down the arm, not too bad. Gently lower this, and uh, we'll dump it out. Okay, so got the pan out of the way. Here's our filter right here. And what we want to do is that's just sitting in there with pressure. Let it drip, drip, drain a little bit here. And then we can grab onto it. Make sure your hands are clean, your gloves are clean, and just wiggle this thing right on out. And then before anything goes back in, we're going to let this drain for a while and then we'll clean all that up, you know, where the ceiling surface is. And this just kind of it connects in right here. And what I'm doing is there's a grommet there, like a seal, a gasket. I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth as I pull down and get ready for the big spill. Here we go. Got most of it. Oh, man, you didn't see the mess I just made on the floor. Anyway, it's not too bad. Um, get ready for the spill. I'm going to drain out the excess here. You can see that spilling out. Now this one. Okay, good example here. So I just told you about the gasket. The, the little uh, gasket is up in here, it's orange, so we need to get a pick and get that out. If we don't, and we put the new one in with the new gasket, we're gonna have a problem. So let's do that next. Okay, so I got my pick right here. This one has like a little hook on it, uh, on the end just to grab it. Now, you can try getting on it. Now, if this, this one's been sitting here 24 years, it may not wanna give up the ghost. There it goes, I just gripped onto it. Okay, so there you go, yank down on it. It's got like a piece of steel inside this rubber. 
or this rubber encapsulates the metal, I guess. So it's a seal is what it is. We'll take a look at that in a second. I'm actually kind of surprised by how clean it is. There's our old filter. Anyway, here's what I do to clean the bolts. You want to make sure they're cleaned up. I take my brake cleaner on a clean paper towel. You're going to need a lot of these, so make sure you got a roll of that. Then what I do is try to do it one-handed here. I'll roll them up. You could use a rag too, and then I'm kind of mush them around because I don't have a parts cleaner. So that is my parts cleaner. And I'll do that several times. And you can see like the dirt starting to come off. Now this was my first go around. I decided I should film it. So here's what we look like. Did this two or three times and now I'm down to this level. And just keep getting a new paper towel, spraying this down. And then you'll see all this gunk behind until those are nice and clean. Take a wire brush if they're really bad get that cleaned up. As promised, here's our pan. We're gonna empty what's left in this little uh, drain pan I made out of an old antifreeze, uh, I don't know, bottle. Gotta think of the word. So anyway, let's pour this in here and then we'll get this pan cleaned up. I'm really amazed and I'm actually kind of pleased how clean, oh, there's our little tab I was telling you about. Um, how clean the bottom of this pan is for being original. Here's what we uh, I was talking about earlier. We're gonna keep this as a souvenir. It'll be a giveaway, huh? The Ostars Cars giveaway. Uh, there it is. So at the factory, they just push this through and it winds up just sitting in the bottom of the pan floating around. So this baby was a virgin. So we just popped the cherry right there. I'm just gonna match up my filter here and make sure, we, we did get a Motocraft filter, that everything looks the same, everything's lined up the same, all good. This one has a little bit of schmutz on it, see how black it is, it should be like this, but it's not bad for all those years. And then our gasket, this gasket can only go one way, and that's the way right there. It's going to line up perfect. I'm going to be putting that in place. Let me get this scraped off here. I want to be gentle. We don't want to gouge the pan. That's for sure. So let's get this started. Oop, that came off quick. Work around. It's got a lot of grunge on it on the outside of the pan. There we go. And it actually feels okay. But uh, I don't see any cracks. When these start to leak, They'll, they may get some hairline cracks in here or something like that, but I don't see it on this one, but it's going to go in the, uh, it's going to go in the trash. It served its purpose. And now, all this grunge here, I'll just take my time. You can see all that goo on there. That's dirt and oil and whatever else. I'm going to get both sides of the pan cleaned up really nice. But there is one thing I want to show you here before I do all that, and that's this magnet. Let me get a clean paper towel. Let me show you this magnet here. This is really important that you clean this up. And there is like hardly anything in here. You don't want to see big chunks of metal. If you saw some light metal flakes in here, uh, you know, that's wear and tear. But if you see anything really big and nasty, uh, you got a problem. So this is just a magnet right here. This round magnet. Oh, it's sludgy. And it's a strong one. Yeah, now this one has some goo on it. So let's do this live right here. Let me show you. So, look at all this. Uh, these are metal filings. They stuck on here, and that's normal. But I'll show you how black this is. I can feel it. It's, it's kind of thick. It's almost about an eighth inch of goo on there. So you can see that. It's all metal particles, very fine metal particles, which is normal for wear and tear. And we'll get this all nice and cleaned up. I'll spray this with brake clean. You can see how it looks now. And we'll make sure that that goes back after the pan's all clean. Here's a little trick I do so I don't forget to put my magnet in before uh, we close it all up. So this gasket, like I told you, has a metal lining that's sandwiched between some rubber. I stick it right on there like that, see? So I'll set this aside. 
and then when I go to put my gasket in, because I know I won't forget the gasket, I'll see the magnet hanging on the side and go, oops, make sure you don't forget that. So anyway, let me give you, before I clean this out, give you guys a close-up of it. God, I'm so proud of the truck being so, or the transmission being so clean. So here we go. Um, you know, very little bit of film here, nothing major. Like I say, the fluid's very brown. Doesn't smell too bad. Here's a lot of that metal sludge left over from the magnet. And then I'll get this edge clean and clean out the, uh, this outside here because it's nasty looking. And uh, we'll be all set to put the pan back in. Man, is that nasty. All right, we're gonna clean it up in just a second. You'll see how pretty it looks. Look at this. It's like a diamond in the rough. Man, that's a piece of jewelry right there. <laughs> all right, so we're all set. We're all clean. Uh, we're ready for, there's our gasket. Oop, there's our magnet we almost forgot about. So let's put that in place. It just sits over this little, uh, little nipple thing. That's it, just sits in there all set. This is a, just a piece of, the, I don't know, the metal. That's not dirt. It's a little speck, but it's spotless. Gasket's ready to go in. Uh, we'll get under there. I'm gonna wipe down the transmission before we bolt this in, the flange, and we'll be all set. It's been draining for probably, I don't know, at least a half hour. So I'm gonna be real careful to wipe this dirt off the flange, the mating surface here for the pan and make sure that that dirt is pushed away and out. And keep rotating my rag. And I'll do that until I'm satisfied. Just getting this dirt and stuff out of here. I want to clean the bottom of this valve body up a little bit here. Just put a little brake clean on there. This does have some real smooth uh, goo on it, I guess you call it. So it could be some clutch material, could be some fine metal, whatever it is. We'll get this all cleaned up. So we're ready for our filter. I put some transmission fluid around our seal. And this, we're just going to uh, go ahead and twist this and push in, and it's just gonna sit in there with pressure. So you'll kind of feel it when it's engaged. Once it gets up in there, it'll just sit tight and flat like that. That's it. Okay, and now we're ready for our pan. All right, so our gasket is up there. Oh, you can't see it, but there you go. It's on there. Our magnet's in. Everything's nice and clean. And now what we got to do, the tricky part, is just getting the gasket kind of lined up with the flange there. We'll just kind of set it in place lightly. I'll get a couple of bolts here started. This one looks good. And I'll uh, just get these started by hand. Get one up there. There we go, just to hold that. And then we'll get one like over here somewhere, right now where I can see, just to keep the keep it from flopping around. What's nice is once you get a couple started, then you don't have any more fluid leaking in your face and you can kind of just work around like this. All right, so with all 14 bolts started, and just hand tight, giving you the torque specs. They're 108 to 132 inch pounds is what it calls for. So that would be like nine to 11 foot pounds. Don't get them confused. I've got my torque wrench here start set at about 110 inch pounds. We'll start with that, that's towards the lower end. And what I like to do is I'll just go in a crisscross pattern. So I'll go like here and then come over to here you get the idea and then go back over there and all the way around get this sucker torqued down That's it, okay, 
So I showed you guys that little trick with the magnet and the uh, gasket and all that. Now I'm going to show you another little trick because since everything is buttoned up down below, we got to add fluid. And we'll do that through the uh, dipstick tube. But what I'll do is, since we collected all of our fluid, our old fluid, we had minimal fluid loss on the ground. Now if you spilled a lot of fluid, you're, uh, this might not be as accurate. So what we took out, we're going to put back in. Now I had checked the fluid level before we started filming and uh, it was right on the money. So basically what we'll do is we'll collect all of our fluid and you've got some old oil containers or maybe a milk jug or here's washer fluid. These are a gallon. This one holds five quarts. Of course four quarts is a gallon. And what I'm going to do is just pour all my old oil here, my trans fluid, which uh, I'm going to recycle it anyway so I got to put it in the container and we'll get a measurement here so we'll see what total amount of fluid we have so here's the big big pan I won't bore you guys with this stuff and you won't have to laugh at me when I spill half of it but um, this will give us an idea of what we're going to put back into the transmission so in this case I'm only getting like five quarts four, four to five quarts So on the passenger side down here is our transmission dipstick. We pull that out. Of course, we want to wipe this clean, but let me show you something here up close. There's actually in this particular model, there's two holes here on the dipstick. There's one here, the bottom, and one there. Now when it's cold, you should be in that range. And on this side that you're seeing, there's a cross hatch, right? So that would be cold. And then as the engine or the transmission warms up and gets hot, it, the fluid expands and then it'll be up here. Well, this is the cross hatch area right up in here. And when it's hot, that's where we want it to be. So to my surprise, we only really drained out about five quarts. So that's what I'm going to start anyway, putting back in. And then we'll let it warm up. We'll start the engine, let it warm and uh, put it through its gears. OK, with the foot on the brake, just run it through you know, reverse, neutral drive for about five to 10 seconds in each gear all the way down to, you know, what's it, three, two, and back up. And then we'll let it get warmer, get it, let it heat up and check it again. If everything looks good on that cross hatch, then we go for a ride, a test drive. So like I said, I'm using the Mercon 5 right here. I'm going with the Motocroft, Motocroft, Motorcraft. And, uh, it's simple enough. Oh, by the way, it got a long uh, transmission funnel, I guess you could call it. What it is basically, it's just real tapered at the bottom. I'll leave a link to one of these down below. So this prevents some spillage and it's got a big opening. So let's pour five of these nice red ones, nice bright red fluid going in, clean fluid in, and then we'll start it and take it from there. You know, as I'm putting these in, I'm taking a whiff of this new stuff. And uh, it doesn't smell that great either, brand new even. It doesn't smell burnt, but I don't know. I guess if you could smell like, uh, <laughs> I've never smelt it, but if you smelt horse pee before or something, it smells kind of like that. All right, I put like four and a half quarts in. So a little trick is take your uh, rag or towel, whatever you have, slide it down to the base of the funnel and then pull the funnel out from the fill neck so it's like this when you come up and you don't get oil spilled all over the engine bay and stuff. I let the fluid uh, kind of drain down there for a little bit and I'll put my dipstick in just to see where we're at cold and push it all the way down, pull it out. I'll check it. I got to look at the under the light right now. So right now it's showing that it's well above the cold mark. So we're good. I'm going to go ahead and start it and just let it idle a little bit and then we'll check it without putting it in gear yet. We're just going to run it idle for a little bit, about five, ten minutes. So we're looking. 
looking good. We're in the zone that we need to be in. I'll show you right there. So let me go ahead and do that. Put it through the gears. Foot on the brake. might have heard I put it through all the gears. Let me pull it out now and check. We'll wipe this off. It gets a little tricky when you go to check after you've been pulling this in and out a few times because there's some fluid on the dipstick tube. So you got to kind of keep that in mind for accuracy. Looks like we're right in the zone. Right there, we're right into that cross hatch, right up in here. So we should be fine to uh, take it for a test drive. And after it gets real hot, we'll check it again. And I'll just pop it off and we'll come on back and I'll wrap up the video. I'm back from the test drive and no mistakes and we didn't have any happy accidents, so that's a good thing. Uh, the transmission is shifting like amazing. I can't believe it. I, I haven't felt it shift that smooth in years and I'm trying to think all the way back 20 years, I don't remember it. Uh, anyway, I took it out on the highway. The thing goes into gear nice and smooth. Not that it wasn't bad before, but it was a little bit of a harsher engagement is the only way I can put it. So what I think I'll do is, since I only put in just about, just under five quarts is in that gasket, that transmission pan gasket's reusable. I will in about a thousand miles drop that pan down again get rid of that fluid, put that back in, leave the filter because it wasn't that dirty, you know, it wasn't like real nasty with medical or medical metal particles and then put another uh, five quarts of the Mercon 5 in there and it should be uh, just like 1997 all over again, maybe even better. So anyway, just letting you know, giving you the update, everything went good. I checked for leaks under there. Uh, make sure after you do all that, just make sure that gasket is, you know, sealed up good. Don't want any boo-boos. And other than that, I got a Mercedes over here waiting for me to get on it. I'm going to go get that done. And hopefully within the next week or so, I'll replace that output shaft seal on that transmission that you saw leaking earlier. Hopefully I'll get to film it. So don't forget to subscribe to check it out. And uh, thanks for commenting and liking and all that good stuff down below. Thanks for your time. I appreciate you guys stopping by, checking out the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.